Hi everyone, welcome to our Multigo client training video. So we're gonna show you uh, how to use the client, some of the features that you might not have seen before, and ways that we generally use it uh, to be a little bit more efficient. So in this case, I'm gonna be using Multigo Community Edition, uh, so the free version, and I'm just using the latest that we have. You'll see here, I'm gonna start it up. So one of the first things you'll see when you open the Community Edition is that you need to register. That you can do on our website. You can also download the application from our website um, and it should be quite a painless process. So once the application starts up, the first thing it's going to ask you is just that you log in if you haven't logged in before. So we haven't. So here's the wizard. So I'm going to click next. It's going to ask me to log in with my email address and password. I'm going to do that put in the capture and it will say that I've now got an API key that's valid for three days. So in three days time I'll just have to log in again uh, but it shouldn't uh, take too long or too much time. The next section will ask you if you want to use the public servers or if you have your own. Most of the time you'll just pick public servers, hit next and it will now install all the transforms um, and we'll cover what those are a little bit later. So here it copies, uh, installs all of that, uh, adds the entities and then it will ask us what we want to do. In this case, I'm going to pick a go away and we're going to uh, start from a blank install. So I'm going to say go away, I've done this before, uh, just so that we can do everything uh, like the very first time. Okay, so the first thing you want to do uh, when using Multigo, so it's a, a graphing application that allows you to do link analysis and it also will help you mine uh, particular types of data, is I want to start a new graph. So you should think of a graph as either an investigation or a part of an investigation. So one of the ways that you can start a new graph is click on the global application icon. That's at the top left. I'm just going to maximize that. And you can say new. And that will start a graph. And you'll see that once you've got a graph, the whole outlook of the application changes. Uh, the palette where we have entities is there. Um, and the other windows come to life. Another way that you can do it is you can just click on uh, the little icon next to the application icon. Click on that. That'll start one. And the shortcut that we use uh, most of the time is that you can just use control uh, T or command T on a Mac okay, and that will start a new graph as well. So once you've started a graph, so remember that can be thought of like an investigation or part of an investigation, on the left you'll see that this uh, under the palette is uh, all of our different types of information. So these are called entities in Multigo, so they are categorized uh, into a few sections here, so you can see under location uh, and personal there's a few. And if I want to use this type of information, all I need to do is drag it onto the graph. So for example, if I want to add a person here, I can drag this person entity, you'll see it follows my mouse cursor, and I can drop it onto the graph. Okay, I can do the same, so add a location, uh, maybe add a domain as well, and now I have these entities on my graph. So the first thing you'll see that if you've selected something, this little yellow box, uh, you can just drag it around uh, the graph to be able to put it wherever you wherever you want that. Okay, if I need to change the type of information, so I've added a person here, but obviously John Doe is not someone that I either have the data for or I'm interested in getting data for. I can do that by double clicking on it. And you'll see you get quite a big detail view. You can change the details uh, of this particular entity. Uh, you can click properties, notes, and attachments, uh, things that we'll do a little bit later. One of the ways we generally don't do that so the way that we do change the information is that we'll just double click on the text and then I can change it um, just a lot quicker than going into that view the whole time. So I change my person entity to my name and the location I might change to Cape Town. Okay, now I have these entities modified. Um, if I want to link the entities together, so remember it's a linking tool to get that intelligence, what I can do is make sure that none are selected that I'm interested in and then drag uh, a line from the first entity that I want to link to the second one. So here you can see I'm going to drag from my name down to the location and if I let go it will then give me uh, the properties for that link. So I can say lives here and I can give it something like a color. I can set style and thickness and other properties. Okay so there it will change it. I can also say link uh, maybe me to that domain and I can start building up a graph from various types of information. So that's a nice way to be able to add information to your graph 
change the details and then quickly link them together uh, to, build a, to build a view. Welcome back. In this section, uh, we're gonna start talking about navigation and selection within the tool. And these are things that really make using Multigo powerful, being able to efficiently use the interface to navigate it, uh, manage your selections and so on. So the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll be able to uh, zoom in and out of a graph. So to do that, we recommend uh, you just use the scroll wheel. So I can put the mouse cursor on a particular entity, so type of information, and I can scroll in to that bit of information. So if I want to scroll into uh, this particular location, I can then scroll into it. Um, I can also scroll out by, uh, zoom out by scrolling out. Okay, so I can scroll or zoom into that particular entity and I can do that again. Um, you'll also see in this view on the right, the overview uh, over here, the satellite view as it was previously called, uh, you'll see that that shows me what, how big my selection is. So if I zoom in, you'll see that that box is now made smaller um, and we'll talk about that uh, just now. Okay, so once you've managed to zoom in, you'll see that when you zoom out, as soon as you basically can't read the entities anymore, they will change to icons. And there's a legend at the bottom that describes what type each uh, entity is. So yeah, I can see that these orange ones at the bottom are all a location. Um, and if I zoom in, you'll see that those are actually locations. Okay, so the next thing is being able to move around the graph. To do that, you use right click and drag. Okay, so now I can move around so if I'm zoomed in, I can go through each of these entities and I can have a look at them uh, up close. Additionally, I can use the satellite view so now I can see the section that I'm looking at and I can drag that around this and uh, move, the, move the whole graph around. Okay, so this really, comes, uh, this really becomes second nature after you've used the tool for a little bit. And uh, if, however, you don't want to do that, you can also use the buttons at the top so you can manually zoom in and zoom out. Uh, but we prefer using the mouse and it really does make the tool a lot quicker to use. Uh, the next section is uh, selecting entities. If I want to do that, I can just click on an entity. You'll see that now it's highlighted over there. If I want to select um, another entity, what I can do is hold down Shift. If I hold down Shift, click on the second one, you'll see that two entities are highlighted. So if I've got just one entity highlighted, the detail view will show me uh, relationships between this entity and any other information. And if I have more than one, so if I've selected one, use shift, select another one, you'll see that it gives it to me in a list form of every entity that I've got. Okay, if I want to uh, select entities, I can also drag a box around them. So there you see me dragging a box and I'll select those two. So for example, if I wanted to select all the IP addresses here, what I could do is just drag a box around those and then I can use those uh, for whatever I need to. And there you can see the detail view showing me that list again. I can also navigate up and down uh, the various trees that are created in the tool. So I can click on this entity and if I use control and down arrow, I'll be able to select its child nodes or control up arrow, select its parent, the parent nodes or whatever is selected. So I could take all of these IP addresses and say I'd like to know the locations that they are. And I can, I can see that those are the child nodes so I can just press control down arrow, okay? Additionally, what I could do is I can say, okay, I don't only want to select the children, I want to retain the selection that I've got and select the children. So if I wanted to full, if I wanted to say select this tree, uh, everything from this entity, I could use control and shift, okay? So that will retain my selection. And if I press down arrow, that will select the children uh, of that entity. If I do it again, I will select the child nodes of those entities that are selected. So then I can have uh, the various, uh, the whole tree that I've, that I've got there. And most of the time that we do this, we've got a section. So you can see me dragging it around. Uh, what we'll do is I'll put it into a new graph, just something that you can then work on just that small subset of data. Uh, the last thing I just want to show in this section is that you can also find uh, in your nodes. So under the investigate tab at the top here, you can uh, click on quick find. However, most of the time we just use control F, so the same as in normal applications. Uh, and here I can say, I can find either the name of an entity or of a particular type. So here I'll search everything for say the word Andrew. If I hit find, you'll see that it's found that uh, particular entity. So once it's found that, you'll see that it zooms to that 
selection selected entity or entities that they are and then I can I can use that I can also select entities based on the type so if I'm zoomed out um, I can say okay I'm interested in all the IP addresses so all these purple ones here what I can do is at the top under the investigate tab again I can say select by type and then say IP address and there you'll see it selects those and zooms me in to um, making sure that I can see all the nodes that are selected on the screen and then I can use those. So in this section we're going to quickly look at uh, putting data into the tool as well as uh, quickly being able to take data out. So one of the ways we already covered earlier uh, it's in the first section is that we can manually add data so I could add um, a few entities here and then I could link them up uh, together. So that's the basic way of manually adding something to the graph uh, and one of the things that you can do uh, if you have the data. However, if you do have the data stored uh, on your machine, so for example, I've got a text file here that says Andrew McPherson, Rudolf Temming, Paul Richards, and Andrew Mohawk, the first three being um, the names of people who work at Perturba, and the last one being my alias. So if I select these and I just copy, edit, control C, uh, and I go into the tool, what I can do is I can hit paste, okay, and you will see that I will get those entities out. Okay, I'm going to select them and delete them, just using the delete key. Or what I could do is because they've been copied, I can just click on the graph, control V, and then they will, they will appear. So yeah, you can see it uh, automatically tries to figure out what type they are. So there it's made those three people. And obviously it doesn't know that this is an alias because it could be anything, uh, and it's made it a phrase. So one of the things that you can do after you've copied into the graph is have the ability to change it. So if you have the entities that you wish to change selected, what you can do is right click on it and you see there's going to be a whole bunch of new things uh, and these are for running transform, something that we'll get to in the next section. Uh, but what I can do is I can say select the one that I want to change, right click, go over the change type icon, so you'll see it's a third one. Uh, if I click on that, it'll say what do you want to change this to and I can say okay, well I want to change this to an alias and there I have that as an alias. So it's quite easy to copy in and out of the tool. Um, what I can do is I can also, I can select these. Let's say I was interested in taking this data out of the tool. So I want to use it in a report. I want to email it to someone. What I can do is select it and I can either click copy up here and say copy as value list and that will just take what's shown on the graph. And if I put that into this document, you'll see that those are, are copied in here. Additionally, I can right click to get that whole screen again and I can say, um, I can click on uh, copy and then I can say copy as value list. So you can do it there as well and then I'll be able to paste that in here and I have that data in. So it's quite easy to be able to copy data in and out of the tool um, and there are a number of shortcuts. So either using the shortcuts up here or being able to use them in the context menu. Um, lastly, you can obviously put data in uh, by running transforms and that's what we're going to cover in the next section. Welcome back. This section we're going to quickly look at transforms in Multigo. So we've added a whole bunch of stuff manually and been manually linking them together in the tool um, which is great and a great way to visualize your data. But really one of the really powerful features of Multigo is that you have the ability to, to mine data uh, within the tool itself. So we do this with something called transforms, which essentially are the glue between two different types of entities. So you can take one type of entity, run a transform, which will then link it to another kind. Um, with the tool uh, standard, it comes with a whole bunch of open source intelligence stuff. So dealing with things like infrastructure and people on the internet. Uh, but you can also use the tool to add on uh, third party add-ons, the way people have written uh, different transform to visualize, to visualize different data sets. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, some of the free ones that Ruloff wrote to visualize the movie database. So what I can do is I can just click on the manage tab and then click on transform hub and this will take me to the hub where I can add different transforms. So I'm going to hover over the movie database and I'm just going to click on install. Say so yes I want to install this and this is just going to automatically install this into the tool for me. So now I'll have the ability to visualize a new type of data. And there you can see it added three new entities um, and a bunch of other things. So I have this data in the tool. So now I'm going to open a new graph. 
and I'm going to start uh, with a phrase this time. So I'm going to search for something and I'm going to take a phrase and I'm going to use the phrase Mad Max. So I like the movies and you'll see that now I can run a transform that says search for movie. So if I right click on it, I get a list of different transforms that are applicable. So the glue between entities for this type of entity. So I'm going to say search for movie and it asked me for an API key. I can put in five digits there. And now it will return a whole bunch of entities. So this is where I didn't have to manually do it. It will then go and query this data and return them. And here you can see that I've got Road Warrior, Mad Max, Fury Road, the new one, um, Turkish Mad Max, and Max and the Junkman. So Max and the Junkman, probably not something I'm interested in. So if I just select that, I press delete, say yes, I'm deleted. And now I can work further with these. So you can see these are movies, which by default you don't have until you've installed these add-ons. So now I can say, okay, I take these uh, movies and I can run transform that says, I want to take it to talent. So just the people who have been in the movies, I put in my API key again, you can just use any five digits. And now it will then go and return the top 12 people from the movie. So there you see that they are being uh, visualized and now I can see them in the tool, which is a really nice, nice way to do that. Um, so what I can do here is I can also use some of the different views. Uh, so these are here at the top and I can use something like bubble view, which is a great way to visualize data and see, okay, what is most connected in my graph of information. And here you'll see that obviously Mel Gibson uh, featured in three of the films. So he's the largest uh, of these nodes and I can switch back to main view as well uh, to see the data as I was working with it. So it's a nice way to be able to say, okay, not only can I visualize data this way, I can also, um, I can also use it in the tool. So just a, one more example, uh, kind of tying in everything else that we've done. So I'm gonna start a new graph here, and you'll see I've got an Excel document of uh, Google domains. I've just collected a few of them. What I can do is I can select this column. I'm just gonna say copy, and when I go to the tool, I can paste that into the tool. And now I've got all the various uh, domains and I'm going to run a transform that uh, just looks up the website for each of these and now I've got all the websites uh, as they come out what I can do is say okay well now I want to take the websites to IP addresses so in this case I could select each one or do select by type under the investigate tab but I'm just going to do control down arrow and now I've got the websites and now I can run a transform uh, to IP address so that will run on everything that I've got selected here so here you can see it is tying them up. And now I can see that uh, all of these IP addresses, uh, most of these websites are on one IP address and there's one over here that's uh, linked to a few different ones. So then I can say, okay, well for this IP address, maybe the one I'm interested in, uh, show me the location of where it's located. Uh, and you'll see that that's in Mountain View. And then of course, you can use Bubble View again to visualize this data. And you'll see that this IP address is the most connected thing in my graph which is a nice way to use that information. Thank you for watching this video. The idea that uh, we wanted to get across was just that uh, you can use the tool in a very efficient way with a few things that we've shown you today. And really this video just scratches the surface of it. So we have over 150 transforms. There's loads of different entities that we haven't covered, as well as of course you having the ability to visualize your own data. Uh, but really we hope that this video will give you enough just to be a little bit more efficient in when you are using the tool and also give you the ability to start playing with it and really get a feel for the features of it um, and what it can do for you and your data.